response. We're working on willingness. Oh, so I'm that. writing it about it <coughs> over time you build a relationship with someone mm -hmm. what do you do if you just have a momentary meeting you're not going to probably see this person again like something happened yesterday I met this young lady and she told me her story and it was just this horrific situation where she was molested by her biological father just horrible stuff and she, sh she opened up and shared it with me and I just said oh I am so sorry we had like 15 minutes together, 10, maybe 10 minutes together. It was in a busy, you know, area. How do you, what do you do? With, mm. how, how, how many questions can you get out? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Beyond saying, yeah, I'm really sorry. That I, I understand <clears throat> now how, why you're in the situation you're in. That's about all I could get out. Uh, you know? I mean, some suggestions would be, um, hey, if there's a way, if you ever need to talk some more, uh, let's get together. Here's my phone number, yeah. something like that. That'd be yeah. a way. <clears throat> Another thing is to try and, and and do some type of personal ministry with them as much as you can. Yeah. It, you know, I, he said something here in the uh, uh, in the facilitator's guide um, that we have to keep in mind. I just I just think it was interesting. Have you ever noticed that we may spend hours preparing for a Sunday school class, a Bible study, an elders meeting that will offer counsel to someone on the spur of the moment with little or no preparation? And, and so, so we want to be careful. I mean, I think there's a, there's a place for saying something like that because sometimes you run into people and, and they just kind of go, blah. And, you yeah, know, I, go. I think I, it took a few minutes for me just to get my job back up. Oh, yeah, exactly. Wow. So well, you just told me this and I don't even know you. Right. And I think um, it's something that... We always want to be prepared to say something. We always want to be prepared, uh, just even going back um, in reference to the gospel, 1 Peter 3, uh, always prepare, always ready to give a uh, defense of the faith. Mm -hmm. So always being ready to speak, and yet um, the, the mindset is if, if there's a way that I can, if I can keep meeting with this person, to just offer that to them. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people don't want that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can only, you can do this as much as people will let you, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. sometimes people, they just open and they close and they just, they don't mm -hmm. want to talk to you anymore, which yeah. I, that doesn't make any sense to me either, but th does that help you? I mean, it does. That's, yeah. a, that's a great, yeah, great I question. Was, I was just blown away that she just, yeah. wow. How, how, what's your name? Yeah. <clears throat> Sounds like a God moment to me. Sounds like a God moment. Yes. Where God was using Janet to personally minister yeah. to this yeah. young lady. Was this person a Christian in church? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. No, as, as a matter of fact, it was we had, I'm, I'm a CASA for, it's a court appointed special advocate and so we had a, a, a Christmas party or a holiday party for the children and anyone in any of the kids in care were there and it was out at the um, Cliff Castle so they had reserved Johnny Rockets the bowling alley and the kids zone and I just happened to take child that I'm advocating for to the bowling alley and so the, the child and, and the foster mom and myself shared a lane with this other oh, I fo see. foster so it's a it's a young lady in foster care and she's already she already has two children and she's just it was just like and so we sat together because the lanes were busy and so we shared the lane and so we're sitting I'm just sitting across those little tables at the bowling mm -hmm. alley with her and wow so that's how it came about. So we, it was noisy, people coming and going. It wasn't like I could just sit and chat with her. And, and that's my idea. That might be a better, even more so, to say, hey, you know, this is probably a difficult spot for you to be able to share this stuff. I mean, because there's some people around. Do you want to get together or something like that? And, and, and you know, in that situation, she, oh yeah. yeah, let's do that. Yeah. 
And then you can begin to build that relationship. Yeah. So. And the emphasis is that's, that's time. It's a great question. Um, when I was in seminary uh, at Grace Community Church, uh, as an intern, you had to be, you were the POD, the pastor of the day. And you would have people from all over the country calling Grace, because you know, MacArthur, he's well known mm -hmm. nationally. So you have people calling no with unbelievable issues. I mean, I know. very involved. Mm -hmm. And you had to be ready to give them an answer. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say about it? And because of, and then they yeah. give you this. And then you're, oh, so I know, I know your feeling, because I had that feeling, you know, in my draw, I have to pick my job off the table, you know. <laughs> I just, wow, yeah. what do you say to that? So, yeah. well, but, well, I mean, in, I hate to be the killjoy, but I mean, these, these, these uh, principles, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. no, don't take this wrong, but I mean, these <laughs> principles are certainly helpful in those circumstances, but I mean, isn't, and I'm just trying to get back to the center that the whole gist of this, uh, our relationships with each other. What? Isn't this whole thing Focused on the church, oh, our relationships it? with yes, that's primary. Uh, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, like I said, not that right. the principles can't go outside, right, right. And, and that becomes more of an evangelism kind of a counseling thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it would be. It would be an evangelism type thing for, in Janet's case. Yeah, but yeah. That's the that's the mindset is that we're taking these principles and trying to how can we implement this in the local church because then we're ministering to each other and then there can be something that will flow outside of that, we're actually ministering outside of us, not just inside. Mm -hmm. That's good. What a great question, Janet. Thank you. That's, that's good. Um, these are the things that you, oh, I'm sorry. Any, any other thoughts or, or comments? Yeah. Um, you know, the, Janet's um, statements really lead to the, the ultimate question. And that is, am I willing to invest time? Which could also be interpreted, am I willing to love that person enough to put my schedule on hold to see to the needs of a person that's obviously been cut very deeply, <clears throat> wounded very severely. And uh, that's really where the rubber meets the road, at least for me. God is saying to Mark, are you willing to take time? Because we all know how to spell love. It's T-I-M-E. And it takes time to love people. And that's something that is very hard for us in our busy schedule, in our busy world, to find the time to minister to other people. That's really, it's a, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's taking time with people. It's yeah. Willing and wanting. <coughs> willing and wanting. Right. Willing, yeah. The motivation. Takes a you know, takes a lot to swallow and go up to a person and ask how they're are really doing, you know. <laughs> well, and it's not going to be a. It can be. Don't get me wrong. Um, I, I was thinking this morning. You have uh, 24 hours in a day, right? Times seven. You have 168 hours. Out of the 168 hours. If you just come to the service on just one service, that's about two hours. So you have 168 hours, and you have about two hours where there's really, in, in our setup, I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just saying it is what it is. In our setup, preaching of the word, you're singing together, how much of that time are you going to be able to spend with someone and really talk with them? Mm -hmm. It's going, to make it, it's going to make it difficult. What is the percentage? Exactly. What is the percentage? It's, it's, it's going to be very small. Now, I'm not saying, uh, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying that we're supposed to change that. It is what it is. But what I'm saying, though, is we want to be able to take that time here, but understand that when you're trying to get into a conversation, deep conversation with somebody here at this time, it's going to be very difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's why. You know, you have another 166 hours throughout the week. 
You see what I mean? So keep that in mind as, as you're, and even if you're here at 9.30, I mean, add another hour, so that's three hours. So now you're, you're left with 165 hours. You see what I mean? So instead of 2%, you're up to 3%. Hey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but and I'm, not, I'm not saying this to make, not to make you feel some way, but I'm not doing that to intentionally try to try to make you feel guilty. I'm not doing that. That's just the reality. It's a fact. Well, it's, yes, it's a it's fact. A it's fact. just what it is. So, so as you are trying to take time with people, understand that just this day at this time, it's just, you're just touching it. It needs to take place at another time period. So. Good, good comments, good thoughts. And other things, I want to move on to something else, which, and I'm, at this point, I mean, just, I was watching the video again, and I was thinking, you know, maybe we should spend more time on this than just today. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe we need to do that. Um, there's an opportunity to use the tool. He actually gives a case study and I thought what I do is, is print this out for you. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's read this through together, and uh, and then we can try and implement and see how how we're doing at the at the different sections that we have here. Uh, so notice how it begins, <clears throat> Sharon. <laughs> Sharon approached me after our Sunday service. Did everybody see where I'm at? That mm -hmm. me her after Sharon. She said that her marriage was a mess, that we needed to talk immediately. I told her that it sounded too important to squeeze into a few minutes. I set a time to meet with Sharon and asked her to invite her husband. Uh, just a side note, that's, that kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, Janet. Somebody used to talk, somebody would try to schedule time mm -hmm. with them. So. Mm -hmm. Sharon came alone and told her story emotionally and in great detail. She said her husband, Ed, was unwilling to come. He told her that either she got her act together or he was out of here. Sharon mm -hmm. told of an increasingly tense relationship. She spoke of the fact that she and Ed were no longer sleeping in the same room or going anywhere together. They had separate bank accounts and recently had agreed it was best to eat supper separately. Their two young children took turns eating with each parent. <clears throat> Even before their marriage, they had experienced problems in communication. Ed felt that Sharon was always trying to control him and his decision. Sharon felt that Ed never really paid attention to her viewpoint unless she made it real clear. Yet Ed always said that Sharon was the most beautiful woman in the world, and Sharon said that Ed was the best thing that ever happened to her. Ed was a mover and shaker with an ever-expanding import business, and Sharon enjoyed being with people that mattered. Sharon had lived in foster homes all their life, never truly knowing her real parents. Ed was raised in a typical working-class neighborhood in the city. Sharon said that Ed had been saying for years she, that she was slowly destroying his manhood. Sharon confessed to having two affairs during the marriage. She said that Ed was very angry, and she appeared to be the same. Sharon made her agenda for counseling very clear when we first talked by saying, I'm not here to work on me. I think I am okay. I'm here because my marriage is in trouble. Do you think you can get my husband to talk to you? He's the one who needs help. And, and that is a great, I think it's a great illustration of just exactly how people, I'm sorry, the, the only illustration that comes to my mind is people just throw up all over you. I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, there's just deep, yes. I mean, they just, Everything is all oh, this is kind of oh, that's it, and then they walk away, and you're, you're left trying to clean up the mess, and just oh, uh, you know. So, so let's think about this. And I have a cheat sheet for me. Uh -oh. <laughs> it was hard for me, so don't feel bad. I, I really don't know. That's okay. I'm thinking that I. Um, Let's look at the situation. What's the situation here? That you Sin. See? Say again. Sin. Sin, okay. Sin. Uh, be more specific. What's the conflict? The conflict in. They both the have their own agenda. Okay, so. Trouble marriage. Okay, so that's the situation. Ta da! <laughs> We're there. Um, what else? They both have their own agenda. Which is, you get right. You get right. You know, they, they both think the other's it wrong. It sounds like some... That's more response. Okay. It's a finger-pointing contest. Are you talking about the location? Like, the separate bedroom issues? Like uh, yeah, that would be, that'd be one. Um, separate bank accounts. Separation. Yeah. Bedrooms. Once they start bed. Meal times. Uh, bank. Meal. Okay. They're already divorced. Yeah, they are. You're oh, right. Now, again, they are. Notice which 
we don't want to start jumping to conclusions like this. I mean, I, I understand what you mean. I think there, there's truth to that. But let's try and deal with things one situation, huh, no pun intended, at a time. <laughs> what is going on? What's the situation? Um, so basically, what all we're doing here is just assessing. And the video used the term environment. I, I termed it as the environment in which they live. And what's the environment that they live in? Well, I mean, you're labeling it right now. It's it's not a good environment, obviously. It's hostile. And it, there's animosity, obviously, on both sides. What are you going to say, Sandy? For one thing, you're all just hearing what she, what she has to say. So. Good point. And what does she say about her husband? They're leading separate lives. Yeah. No, what does she say about her husband? He won't come. Yeah. So, he needs help. Disconnect. And I... He's the one that needs fit. <laughs> He's the one that help, right? Oh, you're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. I love how she's coming to get help for him. Yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. Good point. Yeah, I'm coming to fix him. Yeah. It's like I'm coming in. I'm coming in with a prayer request. Yeah, yeah. fix him. <laughs> I see a lot. Of, I see a lot of. Yeah, she told the guy that she had two affairs. Well, that goes to something else, but that's, yeah, that's true. Um, you'd be surprised. That's exactly how people come in when they come to see my counseling. So it's that It's, it's amazing. Um, uh, I think we've got most of it. Yeah, but you, well, never mind. Well, another, never another thing, mind, uh, never mind. Uh, another situation. What's going on? What's the situation? What's, what's, what is going on? Communication problems. So, all right. Okay. So now, what have been what have been responses? What was one of the responses? Sandy just mentioned it. She had two affairs. That's how she responded. Mm. Separate bedrooms. Those are all responses. Yeah. I, mean, I know you have it up on the situation, but it's the same thing. It's still a response. Uh huh. Separate bank account. He's pouring his life into his business. I think that would be a response. Yeah. Or he's playing. Yeah, because he he's, he's running. He's um, he's going somewhere else besides health. And a lot of time, what men will do is they will bury themselves in work because it gives them a way to not have to really face the real issues and they can go hide as it were. Yes. And disconnect basically from the from the pain and the like pastor. Eat separately. This probably wouldn't necessarily be I mean, not necessarily legit because we're dealing with Sharon here, not with Ed. Yeah. And does, I, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, well, she's claiming he says that. Right, but that's not necessarily her response. And, and I'm wondering if, you know, and the place of this is a case study, so we don't know, but I mean, I'm wondering if, he, if she even really asked him to come or if she just said yeah, he was unwilling to come. But either, either way, that's a response, too, because well, he was unwilling to come. She's making excuses for her She behavior. came for help. No, she didn't. For Ed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's making excuses for her behavior. Yeah. But that's not necessarily how she's responding. I mean, that might be how she's, that might be how you are interpreting this and this, mm -hmm. but how how is she on the exterior responding? She what? is crying for help. Yes, she is crying. She came for, for help, but the help She's, is not necessary for her. She she is not satisfied with the situation. Let's put it that way. And yeah. she would she is crying out for help. Yeah, is there, is she's still asking for help for her. She is she ultimately is. she does right. She at help her by helping it. Right, and in order for her <laughs> to get involved to the point where she goes and asks for help, she is ultimately asking for help for herself as well. 
Yes, and I think that that's true, but now what we're starting to do, we're starting to do this and this. And, and sometimes it's very difficult to disconnect yes, yes. this, you know, you can't, and, and, and Travis said, you know, it is still part of the situation, although it manifests itself in a different area. It still is part of the situation. Is there room in here for why she's behaving the way she is? I'm thinking because she's grew up in foster homes, she's not secure. She's not trusting. She's, you know, she doesn't recognize that that comes down as a motive. That could go into motive. Mm -hmm. She doesn't even probably even recognize and that would probably be the reason because she never knew had that security of parents in her home and never had and a so father. She's not trusting. And so mm -hmm. he talked about history here when he was trying to deal with the situation. So that might be some other information for you to have with this. Is that uh, uh, she's got some baggage? Foster yeah. home. Um, when she head. comes to recognize maybe business. That's why she's viewing her lens, you know. Or, okay. So we're making an observation here about the history of foster home. That's not that could play a factor into this. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, no. Ask you to talk to Ed. Okay. Um, she, you know, I. I I'm not sure I, now I agree with you, Mark, because you said she's asking for help. No, she doesn't think she needs help. She's coming for Ed. Well, she's, she's, she's so pushing. The, so the motivation, so, okay, go ahead. What, the, what people do is they push so you will help them. The, I'm, I'm not the problem. I'm, there's nothing wrong with me. So their idea is help them. I want help in the marriage. I want I want marriage help. I mean, if you want to put it in a general category like that, but for them to actually say, in some uh, ulterior motive, I don't want you to help me. No, no, no. They're, they're, she doesn't want help. He's the problem. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying. The only, the only um, problem that I have with, with that is why she is even bothering. Right. Because things that's, aren't going her way. She's selfish. Okay. So she, but, that's, <laughs> but she's still asking for help then. That, that, that's if, if that, that's, going her way, that's yeah. where I'm going. Help to get her way if she, exactly. was, <laughs> if she didn't her. care about the situation. She does help. She loves them. I said it there. But I see what you're saying, Jim. And, yeah. and, and, and I think there's a certain level of... There's a, there's a gray area here, maybe a little bit about what the true motivation is, and we we haven't got there obviously yet. So and I see what you're saying. Thing we can't tell. It's hard. It it's is. hard to do that. It is. Uh, I see. Sam's gonna say something. Paige's gonna say something. But we want to just put that down just in her thoughts, which is kind of what we're talking about. She does say her thought is my marriage is in trouble. She does have that thought. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sandy and Peggy. It says here that they had problems communicating before they ever got married. Mm -hmm. Maybe with their two different lifestyles to begin with. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, exactly. Because that's a good, as we want to bring that up in their situation, what's going on, communication problems. And, and that, that could even go in her history here. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. Peggy, what are you going to say? I think she's just passing the book. She wants help in her marriage, but she doesn't want to change herself. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. so many ways this can go wrong with us if we're helping this person and if this person I mean there's so many ways this can go wrong mm -hmm. because this is this is what most people in, in this world live for is, is is trying to help somebody trying to respond uh, even in even in the fact oh I'm helping Sharon and Ed get through their marriage you know gossip things like that this is this is the kind of stuff that that people nowadays live for, and it's so it'd be so easy to mess this up, and, and that's why it's. I think you're so right with that, and that's why I thought it was important, intriguing to me. Couple days on this. We, <laughs> just when you mentioned, I was. It's a, you just can't apply principles. Yeah. We said 
we spend, we may spend hours preparing for a Sunday school lesson, a Bible study, elders meeting. It will offer counsel to someone in the spur of the moment. He gives an example. Mm -hmm. Your friend calls you in distress. She was cleaning out her son's sock drawer, found a bag of marijuana. Without missing a beat, you begin to advise her on how to handle this very serious issue. Because we don't take the time to think biblically about what others share with us, very often we're blind. We are the blind leading the blind. And, 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 and that's what people do is they think, oh, I, I know the answer. I, I have this. Or even somebody might even say, oh, my, my, my kid went to jail, so I, I know how to advise you. Well, maybe, but maybe you're not, you haven't been advised in a biblical way. It's, that's why it's, it's trying to trying to think through and, that, and, and also that's why he brought up if you have two or three people that you're able to do this with really being involved in their lives because you just can't do this with everybody not, not just anybody's going to be qualified to deal with this say again not just anybody's going to be qualified to deal with this ah, right. Right. ah no my friend everyone's qualified Amen. everyone is a Christian is qualified amen that's exactly what he was saying at the very end. Every person in this room, and I was in, he was in Seattle, okay, when he was cool. teaching this. This is what we need to understand. <laughs> we have relegated this to the professional. Yes. And, and, and that's why, well, that's what we pay you, Jim. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Jim, can I make, can I make a statement here? Oh. So, Jim, I kind of agree with what he says. Somebody's going to get in there and mess it up. And that's true. And that's why we want to make sure we look at things biblically and, and taking the information as much as we can. And looking at th looking through things in a biblical way, and, and I'm telling you, I mean, this is where theology comes in. And having a good theology, a good foundation in the scriptures, that's where this is going to come into play. Because Michael, you would be perfect for this. Yeah. Susanna and Ward, uh, see, you all would be perfect for this. I'm not. We're we're getting a difference of a thing here. I'm saying not everybody. Everybody should be qualified. But I must say, not everybody is. They should be. Yes, yes, you're right. Every Christian should be able to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. They should have a, a capability to be able to do okay. this. So we're kind of talking about the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I misunderstood you. Are we having yeah. a communication problem? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, well yeah, no. Everybody should, yes, every Christian should be qualified to do so. Mm -hmm. Not every Christian is going to be qualified to do so. Unfortunately, that's, Can they? that's what's happened. Do they have the ability? Yes. Mm -hmm. What were we going to say, Dan? What do you do with the person when they're saying it's not my fault? It, every, it is never my fault. It's the, you, you can talk to the person to you like blue in the face, and it's it's the system. It's everyone else. It's not my fault that my kids were taken from me. I was I was uh, set up. I was. It's never ever me. And how can you even approach any of these other questions until you get to a point where you go, you know what? Is there any? And I have asked the question, what good has come out of this? Nothing. It's, it's, it's everyone else's. I said, something good has come out of this situation. What good do you see? That was my opener. Question to try to open up this person. Nothing. Absolutely no good has come out of this. I said, but have you learned how to be a better mom through any of this at all? No. Like, okay, then you're kind of stonewalled. And you want to open up and ask some more leading questions. And, and that, <laughs> that is like the most frustrating thing. It's like, and you know what? Can I, can I graciously say this? Welcome to my job. Yeah. yeah. You're, You're not always going to be successful. Well, this is, that's, that's the job of the pastor because, and, and I do this even with my, in my own life. In my own life and in the lives of other people, I see exactly where people need to be, but I know that they can't see that themselves. Mm -hmm. And I know exactly where I need to be, and yet sometimes I can't, Many times. I can't see that myself either. So what do you do? Well, you give the principles as best as you can. And then you pray for God to do work. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing you do. Mm -hmm. I can only help you. You can only help me. We can only help each other as much as we want to be helped. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I mean, excellent. there's no... You can't you force can't yourself. Force it. You, can't, you can't do no. anything to force yourself on people. And that's that's why it's it's a very... That's why pastors have to be very careful. Ministry with each other, you have to be very careful because you can't push things on people. You have to be very gentle with them. And you also have to realize that there's absolutely nothing I'm going to be able to say that's going to get that person to go, oh. And you can't fix it. Exactly. It has to go back to the scriptures. It has to go back to the power of the Holy Spirit who's going to work in them and through them. And, and you know what? That's where time and longevity comes. 
what's going to make a difference in the lives of the people, the members here in this church, is when I'm here for a very long time. Then what happens is they'll begin to open up. And as you begin to spend time with each other on a continual basis, time, mm -hmm. when you spend time with someone, you're going to begin to open up a little bit more and more to them. Whereas if some of you just know, most of the time, I mean, not, not rule of thumb, most of the time we're pretty close. And, and we, because we're just kind of, you know, I'm not really, not, I don't know where that person's coming from. But as time begins to go by, we begin to open up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more with them. So that's, that's a great question. Wow, yes, very insightful. Very insightful. That's why I, mm -hmm. yeah, well, I understand. Why I mm -hmm. Unfortunately, our time is gone. What, what, I, what I'd like to do, now, next week and the week after that, we're not going to be meeting. So. Um, if you want to keep these sheets, I have plenty, so keep, keep up. If you forget it, I'll have plenty. We can, I can give them a hand out some more. I think it'd be great for us to do this on um, uh, January 8th. Watch so the not next week or the week after that. Watch the same video again. The first hour. That's it. And I thought about that. Maybe we'll watch the video again just to kind of remind us. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, but definitely, I think it'd be good for us to go through this again and talk about this and just to get some uh, little quick And then we'll give you an update on our holiday council. Nice. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for your thoughts. Appreciate that. Yeah. Let's pray. God, give us grace. It's um, we pray that we would love each other enough to mm -hmm. uh, to make the efforts to get to know each other. Uh, God, thank you, God, for for Janet and just the uh, opportunities you've given <coughs> her, give her grace uh, to to take advantage of. The occasions that you give to her and the occasions you give to all of us let us realize as Michael said we should be qualified we should do this so we pray that we would inundate ourselves with your word because we know that we need you to change us and then you use us as instruments to change others by the authority of Jesus 